Hi everyone, I am Niharika and welcome back. Well, in today's lesson, we are going to look at some royal phrases. Now, what's royal? Well, royal is having a status of a king or queen or something related to the royal power. Now, in English, we have some royal phrases for common people like us. Isn't that great? And they're really nice and simple to use. So let's learn what are these phrases. The very first one we have is drama queen. Now drama queen is used especially for a woman uh, who is extremely melodramatic. Okay, like for a situation or for an event, the way this woman would react would be in a very exaggerated, melodramatic way. Like for example, um, a friend of mine lost her wallet and this another friend of mine was like, Oh no, really? Oh, that's awful. Okay, now that's quite an exaggerated reaction, right? So she is such a drama queen. So a woman who reacts in an overdramatic way, okay, or in a very melodramatic manner, she is a drama queen. Okay, so there are so many women who do that, you know, they love all the drama in their life. So that's a perfect phrase to use for such women. So if someone who would act, oh no, that's horrible, that's awful, so they are way too melodramatic. The second one that I have for you is Queen Bee. Well, have you watched the movie Mean Girls? Now, Mean Girls, if you have seen the movie, you would realize what I'm talking about. Well, Queen Bee is again used for a woman who tries to be the center of attraction, okay? She thinks that she is the best in a group, like, you know, if probably it's a group of 10 girls and if one of the girl is a Queen Bee, it means that, you know, she likes things to be revolved around her, okay? She likes being the center of attraction. She likes to be perfect. Well, kind of, she thinks that she's perfect in the group. So she is the queen bee of that group, okay? So a girl who thinks she's the best. Okay, so she is a queen bee. The third uh, phrase that I have for you is Prince Charming. Well, I'm still waiting for my Prince Charming. So, who is that Prince Charming? Well, the guy in the fairy tales? Well, yes. The Prince Charming is used for a man um, who is just perfect, who is very attractive, is very kind, and would be a perfect soulmate. A man of a woman's dreams, okay? So, he is the Prince Charming. So, where is your Prince Charming? Well, you're still dreaming about him? Well, so Prince Charming is um, a perfect phrase for a very attractive man and a very kind, a very polite and a very rich man. Okay, so that's Prince, Prince Charming for you. The next one, live like a king. Now, have you heard that before? Well, I'm sure you have. So what exactly does this phrase really mean? Well, live like a king, it means to live luxuriously, okay? You, when someone is leading a very comfortable, a very luxurious life, he lives like a king. Well, of course, uh, if you've read stories about the kings and the queens, of course, about the royals, they had a very luxurious life, okay? They had uh, servants and uh, they had the best of things in their palace. So they, of course, lived like a king. Now, if you also have a very comfortable, a very rich and luxurious life, then you live like a king. A friend of mine, well, he won a lottery and since then he has been living like a king. 
because he has so much money. So, you know, he drinks champagne, he drives a Ferrari, and now he's living like a king, okay? So, to live like a li king is a luxurious life. Okay, now the fourth phrase that I have for you is King's Ransom. Now, King's Ransom is a phrase used for huge money, okay, like a fortune. Now, imagine if, okay, like in olden days, if a king was held for ransom, can you imagine the amount of money that someone would have to pay to get that king back? Well, yes. So, king's ransom is a perfect phrase for a fortune, something, uh, you know, that costs way too much, millions, billions. For example, this house is beautiful. I'm sure it costs a king's fortune, right? So, it means the house is so beautiful. I'm sure it's a very expensive one. Well, I would like to buy a watch, but I really don't want to pay king's ransom. So it means I don't want to buy a very, very expensive watch, okay, where I have to pay too much of money. So I don't want that kind of a watch. So that's how you can use this phrase. Got that? And then the last one, the royal phrase that I have for you is fit for a king. Now, when do you use that? Well, fit for a king is again a little similar to live like a king. Now, fit for a king is, uh, you know, something uh, that is really expensive and that's really nice and very luxurious. So like, for example, I went for a vacation last month and my hotel room was just fit for a king. So it means my hotel room was really nice and was a very luxurious day that I had. Okay, so fit for a king, it, it means uh, something which is really nice and luxurious. Okay, so that's how you can use it. Well, look at your car. It's just fit for a king. So probably you bought this expensive car and you know, it fits for a king. It means it's very luxurious and it's very classy and nice. Okay, so these are the six royal phrases that you can use in your daily conversation. They're simple and they're fun to use, so use them. I'll be back with a new lesson. Till then, take care. Well, hello and welcome to yet another lesson. And today's lesson is going to prove to be very valuable for you. It's all about tips to ace your job interview. That's right, I'm Reema and I'm going to be with you. I'm going to talk about these fabulous tips that you can use to ace your job interview and come out with flying colors and land your dream job. Hello, thank you for clicking on this video. I am Neharika, back with a new lesson for you. Now, have you noticed some strange technical slang words that most of these English speakers use it on daily basis? And then you keep wondering what it really means. Well, this lesson will tell you what exactly it means. In this lesson, we are going to look at some slang terms, uh, in fact, some technical slang words that belong to the world of photography camera or phone. Hi, this is Seema and I'm back with a new lesson on how about versus what about. Well, both these expressions are question words, okay? So remember that you will always use either of these expressions only when you are asking a question okay so remember this comes with a huge question mark okay and also remember that how about and what about is always used at the start of a sentence it's not going to be in the middle of the sentence it's not going to be at the end it's a question word used always at the beginning of the sentence however 